Let's start looking at the language of algebra. Now, algebra is a language which allows us to express general ideas mathematically. Like with any language, there's certain rules that we have to follow that just make sure we're all talking the same language and can understand each other. And to start with, I just want us to go over some things that we need to be careful about so that we do understand each other when we write. So let's have a look at the first thing I've got here. This thing written up. This says 3 times x. Now, you know, Pretty sure you know we'll use x quite a lot in algebra and this is important to be very careful about how you write your multiplication and how you write your x. If you're going to write a multiplication, something that means multiplication, make it with st as straight a edges as you possibly can and when you write your x write it nicely like that with curves so it's quite clear what is multiplication and what is an x. But actually what we do with algebra to make it even uh, better um, and less confusing is that in fact we leave out that multiplication sign most of the time. And so what we can do is we instead of saying 3 times x we're just going to write 3x. So whenever you see 3x like that, you need to understand that what is missing here, what they haven't written in, but what you need to assume is the multiplication sign. So if you see xy, you will think of that as x times y. Right? And this is something we can do easily with letters. Obviously, we can't do it when we have numbers, right? We couldn't go and leave out multiplication signs when we were saying 5 times 3, for example, because if we just wrote those two numbers next to each other, it would read as 53, and that wouldn't give us what we wanted to. But once we're dealing with letters, we certainly can, and we mostly do. We just simply leave out that time sign. Okay, so then we've got... Um, some other things that we can have a look at. We can say, okay, well, if we're taking x plus x plus x, what we do have there is we've got three lots of x, right? Just like 2 plus 2 plus 2, that would be 3 times 2, or 5 plus 5 plus 5, that's 3 times 5. x plus x plus x will be 3 times x. And we know now that the way we tend to write that in algebra is 3x. And notice in algebra we do tend to put the 3 first, the number first, and then the x. It's okay to say that the answer is x3, but we don't tend to write it that way. We tend to put the number first and then the x. Okay, you should remember from the work that you did on exponents, x multiplied by x multiplied by x is just x cubed. And remember, in algebra, you could have just written this as xxx, right? And that is x cubed. Another little convention we have in algebra is that we leave out the 1 when it's multiplied by x because we know, for example, that 1 times 5 is just 5. 1 times 7 is just 7. 1 times 102 is just 102. And so in the same way, 1 times x, we're just going to write as x. And then x divided by 3 we'll often see written in fraction form. We know fraction means division, so x divided by 3 we'll write as x divided by 3. So these are just some conventions you need to get used to. You've already been using algebra in our last section when you were expressing the general idea of a pattern. So if, for example, if you remember this one, you looked at this little picture made out of matches and the question was to give me the number of matches you'd need for figure N. And what we saw was that if we sort of saw what was going on, that basically each time you had this one that you started with, but for each house you added on, you added on 
five matches. So for figure two, you'd add on two lots of five matches, and for figure three, three lots of five matches. And so we developed a general rule which we could put into words, which is that for figure, whatever figure you add, you must take one and then plus the figure number, whatever figure number you are at, multiplied by five. And we can then translate that into our algebra because what we're saying is we take one and then we add we plus the figure number so we were going to look at figure number n so it will be n and we multiply that by five and we sometimes it helps to go back and think about for specific numbers right so we could think about like for for the figure number three you'd go one and then you'd add on three lots of five and for figure number ten then you'd go one plus ten lots of five so figure number n one plus n lots of five and now we want to write that nicely in our typical algebra way n times five we know we write as five n and we can just talk about it as 5n plus 1 or 1 plus 5n, whichever way we want to write it. We'll often be in a situation where we need to translate a phrase, a way of thinking about something into the language of algebra, like we just had to for um, what we were working with with that pattern. Um, and if we use flow diagrams, that can sometimes help us get there. So let's have a look at an example. Say we wanted to turn this into algebra. Take a number, add 3 to it, and then multiply the answer by 5. One of the ways I like to do this is to use this flow diagram. So I say take a number. Well, the number is, let's say, x. We want to use something like x or n, something with a letter, because it's got to be any number. What do we do to that number first? The first thing we do is add 3. So what I do is I say, okay, it's going to go into a little machine where 3 gets added to it. And then after that, the answer is taken out and it's multiplied by 5. And that produces what I want. Now I can go and see what will I get. I start with an x and I add 3. What comes out here will be x plus 3. Then what happens is that that has to get multiplied by 5. But let's be very careful about what is going to have to be multiplied by 5. It's that whole thing there that needs to be multiplied by 5. So let me straight away put it in brackets so I treat it as one whole thing. And that gets multiplied by 5. And so I can say that whole thing gets multiplied by 5. Now my language of algebra, yeah, we don't really like to put in the time signs. Remember, if we had y times 5, we just write it as 5y. So if we've got this whole thing times 5, we're just going to write it as 5, that whole thing. Okay, so this is flow diagrams and they can really be helpful in helping us get things into algebraic language. One last quick example. Uh, Mpas was y years old now. How old will she be in five years time? Well, the answer to that is if she's y years old now, it'll be y plus five and sometimes we can feel a bit uncomfortable because you know we asked how old is the person you want to give them a single number as an answer but in algebra we'll often have expressions as the answer and if it worries you troubles you think about it if Mpaso was 10 years old now how old would she be in five years time how would you get to the answer you would say 10 plus five if Mpaso was 20 years old, how old would she be in five years' time? It, the answer would be 20 plus 5, 25, right? If she was 22 years old, how old would she be in five years' time? The answer would be 22 plus 5. And that's all we're trying to express with this. Whatever age she is, you're just going to say plus 5 to get to the age she'll be in five years' time. Okay, you try now. How old was she two years ago? Pause, write the answer down, and then let's check it. Right, hopefully that was easy. You know whatever age she is, to get to how she old she was two years ago, you simply subtract two. 
What about the next one? If her sister's half her age, how old is her sister? Pause the video, try it, and we'll go over it. Okay, so to work out how, um, how old her sister is, well, we've just got to take whatever age Mpaso is, and we have to halve it. So we have to take whatever age she is and halve it, which means divide it by two. How old will she be in B years time? All right, well, now this is getting even funnier, but we knew in five years, what did you do? You just added on her five, right? If you wanted to know how old she'd be in five years, you just add on a five. If you wanted to know how old she would be in six years, you'd add on a six, right? If you want to know how old she'll be in B years, you're just going to take the age she is and add on the B. Okay, let's look at the last example, and I'm going to move this up because this is a nice hard one. Um, so let's just remember Impasso was Y years old now. So if we take Impasso's age, and let's just write that in here, this Impasso's age, that is Y. You add 3 to it, double it, then double that answer and add 1, you'll get my age. How old am I? This is too complicated to do straight off. I'm going to go for my flow diagram. So what does it say? Take Impasso's age. So that's going to be the thing that goes into the flow diagram. That's the Y. What happens first? I add 3 to it. Okay, easy enough. I'm going to add 3 to it. Then I double my answer. What does doubling mean? If I double something, I'm just multiplying it by 2. And then once I've doubled it, I must add 1 to it. And then out will come my age. Okay, so let's do this. We start with a y and we add 3. What comes out? y plus 3. And remember, it's useful to put it in brackets so you treat it as a single object. You then need to multiply that whole thing there, that y plus 3, that whole thing there, you need to multiply that by 2. And so what you're going to come out with is 2 lots of y plus 3. And then at the end of that, you're going to add 1 on to that thing. So you're going to get 2y plus 3 and then you're going to add 1 onto that whole thing. And there is our answer.